So, this week sees the release of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a remaster of the original Mass Effect trilogy so beloved by gamers everywhere. And with that, I feel it's time to make a confession. I've never played Mass Effect before. That's right, in the entire 14 years since the release of the original game, I have never touched a Mass Effect game. The reasons are simple. The original game launched on Xbox 360 and PC, and as someone who owned neither an Xbox 360 or a decent gaming PC at the time, I never played it. When the second game launched on PS3, I skipped it because, well, it's a narrative-driven game and I'll need to play the first game beforehand, so if you could get on with releasing that, that'd be great. And then eventually it did release on PS3, and by then it had just passed me by and I never got round to it. I'd been saying all this time that maybe one day I'll get round to playing it, and then I never did. Until now. You see, I'm subscribed to Game Pass for PC, now that I do own a decent gaming PC and the EA Play service just got bolted onto it. And now, the Mass Effect trilogy is available to me at no extra cost, only a couple of clicks away. So finally, after all these years, I have played Mass Effect. Or to be more specific, I'm still playing Mass Effect because I've only played 12 hours so far. But with the remaster now out, how have I been faring so far as a total newcomer to the series? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Shepard. Rex. Vast, sprawling worlds with a lot of lore and unique fictional concepts can be a minefield for storytelling, and there are two major ways that this can go wrong. The first is an over-reliance on explaining what's happening, novels that spend paragraphs overly detailing every aspect of the world to the finest detail, or characters giving long lectures to each other about information they should realistically already know, and it just bogs the whole experience down. The second way this can screw up is deciding to not explain anything at all and leave the audience floundering as the characters throw around terms like Lassi and Timefall and expect us to know what any of that is supposed to mean. Games have an extra layer of bad for this as there are some games that love to hide their explanations away in journal entries that are tucked away in menus and require you to come out of the game and sit and read it all. Mass Effect is set in a vast universe with many alien races, all with their own quirks and motivations. The interstellar politics generated by these vastly different species interacting with one another creates a web of intrigue, backstabbing, alliances and suspicious side-eyeing that could easily lead to the game falling straight into one of those holes. So, it was extremely satisfying to start up the game and get swept up in the ride in a way that didn't feel bogged down in excessive lore explanation, but also didn't leave me confused about what a Turian is. It nailed the fine balance immediately. I believe it did it in a number of ways. For a start, grounding us on a spaceship, and with Star Trek baked into popular culture so heavily these days, it's easy to get straight up to speed. Every single character in the initial scenes is human, meaning we can focus on the story at hand without asking what everyone is and why they act a certain way. Only one alien character is introduced in the opening scenes, and there's a level of suspicion directed at him, despite his seemingly friendly exterior, suggesting some tension in Turian-human relations. The first mission throws us into the action and gradually introduces us to the Geth and a bad Turian named Saren. We don't learn everything possible about them, but we learn enough to get by. And then we go to the Citadel. And here we get to wander around at our own pace, meeting alien creatures of many different races and befriending them, and we slowly start to pick out their quirks. We organically piece together the kind of universe that we inhabit, just through all the context clues around us. And then you meet Garrus and Tally and immediately love them, and then you forget about every other party member you've got available to you. Because the character writing is superb. Every character feels like a legitimate person, whatever their species. The dialogue is snappy and natural, and I quickly figured out how I wanted to interact with different characters without too much trouble. The world at large continues this stellar writing. I want to live in this universe. It's so vast and full of wonder, and the Citadel is such a grand place, and damn, you've... You've hooked me into this, haven't you? And we're only in the prologue. Well... Well, okay. And this extends to the rest of the game, with it feeling almost like a tabletop in how much emphasis it places on social interactions with the odd dungeon crawl thrown in. I love exploring this world and I'm driven forward by just how goddamn interesting it all is. Meanwhile, the map music is beautiful and I feel I should put it on to lull me to sleep sometime. And sometimes it reminds me of the Tomb Raider theme, so that probably helps. Also, Seth Green is in this, and I like that guy, even if his character is a bit of an ass. Shepard. Rex. The menus are... Uh, 
not great. I will admit to some confusion about how the level up page operates due to some weird UI choices, and tidying up your weapons is kind of tedious. Yes, let me click the Omni Gel button 400 times, this seems like a good way to spend my limited time on this earth. Also, I will confess to feeling like the combat system is poorly explained. It's not a bad combat system, and once I started to get the hang of it, I was away and enjoying it. But to begin with, I was struggling a bit, and despite a barrage of messages in the prologue mission doing their best to explain everything, it was, well, the exact problem the story managed to avoid regarding over-explanation up front. By throwing it all at me in the prologue, I forgot half of it by the time I flew it to Navaria, and then I proceeded to flail around just a little bit too much. But let me clarify, the combat system isn't bad, it's not brilliant, it's a perfectly decent system for a game like this, and that's really all I can say about it. My issue lay in its explanation, which I feel could have been handled just a little bit more organically. Shepard. Rex. I don't normally do this section, but Mass Effect has numerous flaws that I can't say are bad, but are noticeable enough to bring up. Some of this is attributable to the game's age, and a lot of this has probably been fixed in the remaster. So on that note, Let's talk about the Mako. I knew about this from the get-go, because I see those who adore the game bring up the Mako in a this game would be perfect if it wasn't for that kind of way. And you guys weren't kidding, it's messy. Not bad, but let's just say I've controlled smoother vehicles in games before. Part of me feels my issue with the Mako stems from a belief that vehicles and games always control better with an analogue stick and the PC version of Mass Effect forces keyboard and mouse at all times. Which is obviously good for the on-foot sections, not so much for the Mako. The digital inputs of WASD do cause the thing to lurch a bit. And yet, I don't hate it. It's clunky and it's rubbish, and steering can sometimes feel simultaneously stiff and overly sensitive. But you can also drive up mountains in a way that makes no sense, but I'm having too much fun to care. I hear they fixed this thing in the remaster, and if they fix the handling but kept the ludicrous mountain climbing nonsense physics, then I'm totally on board. Also, the game launched in 2007, and it kind of shows. There's a lot of emphasis on facial animation, and, well, 2007 facial animation wasn't that great. And that's before you get to just how wonky some of the faces look before you animate them. I mean, look at this guy. Look at his massive head and tiny face. What is happening here? Was he stung in the face by a swarm of angry space bees? Up again, I don't hate this. <laughs> It's a little bit in the uncanny valley, but its weird visual jank is almost charming. Uh, but still, some of these faces. Oof. Shepard. Rex. Oh my god, hell yes, it's worth the hype. I realised I was playing something special when I played two hours and realised afterwards that I wanted to know more about everything. And that quickly made me realise that maybe once I'm done with the whole trilogy, I might do a deeper video on its writing. And that was after just two hours. So that's kind of impressive. It's not a perfect game by any means, and I still have a lot of game to play through, but the first impressions are good. No, the first impressions are excellent. I get it, guys. This is something special. This world, these characters, these dialogue options. And at the time of writing this script, I'm only 12 hours in, and I know there's a lot more to come. Which is exciting. I'm seeing all of this for the first time and I already know what all of you have been harping on about all this time. It's quite likely that I will do future videos on the trilogy with my updated thoughts as I play through it, but for now, I am sold. I know that I'm not only super late to this party, but another function showed up at the venue and got a ton of complaints, and now I've arrived in the aftermath of that. But I don't care. I'm loving Mass Effect so far, and I'm sure I will remain happy with it for the entire trilogy and will not be disappointed in how it all wraps up. Right? Right? Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not give it a like, and why not subscribe to the channel for more like this in the future? I also have a Discord community where you can come and chat with fellow fans, and if you'd like to support the channel financially, I have a Patreon where I share extra updates and behind-the-scenes info, and provide exclusive early access for every video. These are the current people supporting me, and I'd like to say an extra special thank you to them. If you cannot support me financially, you can support the channel simply by sharing the video around, telling your friends about it, and all of that good stuff. And now, I'm off to continue playing through Mass Effect. I will see you again soon.